Good morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. I am in early this morning. I am setting up two activities. I've got one going for my CP kids, and I got one going for my AP kids. The one for the AP class is a little bit more involved. We're doing kinetics, so I have to set up the spectrometers. Um, fortunately, they're really small and very cute, and they work really well, so that shouldn't take too, too long. Um, for the CP kids, we're working on intermolecular forces. We're focusing on ion-dipole interaction, so I have to set up an activity for that. But I don't have a whole lot of time to talk because last night I actually didn't do a single stitch of work. I said, you know what? I'm going to take a break and I'm going to not do anything. And last night I legit didn't do anything. So fortunately, I have first period prep, so I have to get busy. But I will definitely check in with you guys a little bit later after all my labs and activities for the day. It's the end of the day. I finished with all my classes for the day. I also set up the lab for next week. So I cleaned up the lab that I did with AP and then I set up for next week. Next week we're doing intramolecular forces. So it was a really involved lab. That's why I didn't come on here 10th period. I wanted to just update you on some things. So I have to say last week I was feeling really drained and I know I share that with you guys and I said I'm going to be better this week and I will tell you I was much better this week. Um, I didn't spend as much time outside of work grading and lesson planning. What I did is I started batching my tasks and that made my life so much easier this week. So for example, I was doing agendas every single day of the week. For like usually the night before I would do the agenda for both classes, the AP and the CP. So what I did this past weekend is because I already have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing in CP, I sat down and I did all the agenda slides for my CP class. And then I also prepared all of the handouts for my CP class. And so that took a lot off my plate. And so like the batching of those tasks seemed to make my life a lot easier. And then when I came in to make my copies, I made copies for the entire week. So I had a week's worth of copies ready to go. And so that also saved me some time instead of having to kind of like switch gears every single day and print off what I need. In the AP class, I'm still not at the point where it's like, yeah, this is what I'm definitely doing. Um, I'm not quite sure the pacing, especially because you know, the students haven't had that real, that genuine first year chemistry class that they would have had because we were virtual last year. So with AP, I'm still a little bit struggling. So I wasn't able to batch things, but I did try where I could. So for example, like if I knew I was continuing an activity, I definitely went ahead and I created like both slides for the agenda. If I could, I tried to print out, you know, multiple copies of things if I had the ability to. That I think really saved me some time this week. So I actually didn't do a single thing yesterday. I know that so many Many of you are in the same place that I am in that like you've been teaching for a while and you still work every single night and I really am trying to get away from that because I find myself just spending so many hours working and it's really not as enjoyable as it once was like when I was a brand new teacher I was like yeah I'm gonna like make this really awesome worksheet or make this really awesome activity and now I'm to the point where it's like I need to make sure that I can take care of myself you know it definitely uh helped me to feel a little bit better in the classroom today. And so I'm gonna try at least once or twice a week to take the night off and hopefully not have anything to do. So the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about today was um, how I am doing labs in my classes this year. So in the past, I have done like labs with my kids and then I would have them do like a write-up of some kind. And the write-up was super simple. Like it was, you know, purpose, procedure, um, analysis, and conclusions. A really simple write-up, but it took quite a bit of time to grade and you know if you have 24 students in a class and I know some of you have a lot more than that it's going to take you hours to kind of sort through all that information and look at their calculations. I've really completely gravitated away from doing any kind of write-up because honestly when the kids take stuff out of the classroom you don't really know if it's them doing the work. You don't know if they're sitting down with a tutor. You don't know if they're copying off their friend. 
And honestly, it's just a lot of wasted time as teachers grading stuff that you don't really know exactly if it's like the student's work. And so for me, I said, you know what, I'm tired of reading the same old silly answer, which was just such evidence of the fact that the students were copying off of each other. I'm going to start doing post lab quizzes. Now, this idea isn't new or novel. I'm sure there's some of you doing this already, but I've really completely stopped having my students write any kind of lab conclusion or lab write up. In my classroom, they're writing all the time. They're writing explanations for phenomena. They're writing explanations for data and trying to come up with uh, some sort of explanation for observations. Honestly, they're writing all the time. I don't really feel like they're losing anything by not writing a lab report. And so now I'm just completely doing post lab quizzes. And when I do my post lab quizzes, I'm very careful with the way I were the questions and I make sure that the questions reflect a lot of what they've seen from the lab. Sometimes I'll give the post lab quiz the very next day in class or sometimes I'll do it within the same class period. That really encourages the students to pay attention and engage and ask questions if you do it within the same lab period. But when I'm crafting my questions, I always make sure that I include some sort of data analysis piece. So maybe for example, they gather the data during the lab, which is fine, but maybe I give them some alternative scenario. And in that alternative scenario, I actually show them the data and ask them to construct some sort of response to that data. So they're still writing and they're still practicing constructing explanations, but it's such that we know that it's their actual work. And obviously there's only so much they can write on a quiz. So it's not going to be this like long drawn out thing that you're going to have to spend hours and hours creating. So if you haven't spent time creating lab quizzes, I know it's going to be a lot of work up front, but I think that that can be a huge time saver, especially in terms of grading. The grading won't be as much, and you can also make sure that it actually represents what your students know and not what other students or their tutor knows, for example. So I think that's it for me. I'm actually gonna go meet some colleagues after work here. I'm really excited. I know I'm doing something else for myself today. I'm not working tonight either. So technically, technically that's two nights this week that I didn't do any work. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll definitely check in with you guys next week.